We're going to look at the Dal Keith uh, high school uh, specimen papers. There's three of them, and they can be found, um, as I said before, if you go to the National 5 website and you go to all resources, go to National 4. Uh, if you go to assessment preparation, it takes you down to here. So I said, I think ADU is not in it anymore. So we're looking at numeracy, expression and formulae, and relationships. And so far, I've been concentrating on relationships. I've been through this booklet. And now I'm going to go through the Dalkey booklet, which is three specimen papers. So we'll just go through nice and quick. Um, if you do download this, you'll see there's three papers. There's also three marking schemes at the back to give you an idea of where your marks are coming from as well. Uh, these questions are overly complicated, so the marking scheme is quite straightforward. Sometimes there can be a huge marking scheme depending on the different answers people give. But if you're interested, you can have a look at the marking scheme. So let's just go through um, our practice paper. So question one, copy and complete the table. So we've got a value, values of x, and we need to substitute that in to get our values of y. So if x is 1, y is going to be 4. All I've done here is said 2 multiplied by 1 plus 1. Oh, sorry, 3. <laughs> Ooh, getting tired. Um, 3, so 2 times 1 is 2, plus the 1 is 3. And then the next one, I'm going to do 2. I'm going to substitute in 2 plus 1, so that's going to give me 5. And then to substitute in 3 plus the 1, that's going to give me 7. So all I'm doing is putting this value of x into the equation and see what number of y I get out. Uh, draw the line, you will also need to draw a grid. So let's just see if we can use this grid. What I'm going to do now is plot these points. So here's 1 and 3. Here's 2 and 5. And here's 3 and 7. And all I've done there is for the x, I'm going along. And for the y, I'm going up or down. So 1, 3 just means go along 1, go up 3. 2, 5 means go along 2, go up 5. 3, 7, go along 3 up seven and then you can draw your line through that so you should extend your line in all directions so extend it up this way extend it down this way so i don't the, the rule of function on this is actually quite poor so i'm not going to do that but you could then um, extend your your line further down yeah. so pretty straightforward marks you know plotting your substitute in and then plotting the three points and drawing a line through them and just carrying that line on that's fine um Pretty, pretty straightforward. The next one's the, the sort of trickier bit of saying what is the equation of this line? So whenever you've got um, a straight line, it usually is in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, so it's usually something like y is equal to you know 2x plus 1, or y is equal to 4x take away 5, y is equal to x plus 5, or just y is equal to x. And these are all straight lines that go um, you know, diagonally, um, yeah, kind of like this or like this. But the minute we've got a purely horizontal or vertical line, this, this breaks down. Just think about what's happening on this line. So, see, I just pick out some points, just uh, any points. Right? So, the value of x there that's 2, that's 5, that's negative 4, that's my x values. What is the y value? The y value each time is just 2. 2, 2. It doesn't matter what value of x you've got. The y value is always 2. That's a y value. So in this case, the line is as y is equal to 2. Because it's not what x is, y is always 2. If we had a vertical line, so you had a vertical line that went like this, doesn't matter what value of y I've got, the x value is always negative 1. So the x is equal to negative 1. So when you've got a horizontal or a vertical, try and think about that. Okay, what is the what is the value? Y here is always 2, X here is always minus 1. Stop. Solve the following equation. Two things. Uh, bod mass or bid mass or bomb dash, whatever you're thinking on. We're doing that in the opposite direction. So we always start off with getting rid of the plus or the minus, and then we would do the multiply or the divide. So I'm going to write that up here. I'm going to say 3y plus 7 is equal to negative 14. So how do I get rid of the plus 7? Well, I take it away from both sides. So I could write take away 7 on this side and take away 7 on this side. 
So that's going to give me 3y on this side. 7's cancel out. And then negative 21. Now I think doing that can be quite messy. So I quite like doing my working line. So what I would maybe do is say, instead of writing these bits in here, I would just write it on the side and then I know that that's the sum I'm doing and I'm doing it to both sides. It just keeps it neater. And then here as well, I would say divide by three because I'm trying to move the three over. What's the opposite of three times? It's three divide. And if I write it over here, to me, I prefer that to write down the divide by three on both sides. It just gets quite messy quite quickly, okay? So if you just write divide by three, I know that three divided by three is going to give me one, so I get one y. And then negative 21 divided by 3 is negative 7. 21 divided by 3 is 7. And there's a negative, negative and a positive gives you negative. You can check you've done that right, because you could sum it at the beginning. You could say 3 times negative 7 is negative 21, plus the 7 gives you negative 14. So you can just double check you've done it correctly as well. But yeah, for the solving the equations, you're doing bod mass in reverse, and what you do to one side, you do to the other. Do this bit first. Uh, changing the subject. So now we're going to change the subject to T. Very, very similar question actually, isn't it? Because we're saying D is equal to S times T. And I want to get T on its own. So how do I get rid of the S? Well, it's S times. So I'm going to do the opposite of S times, which is just divide by S. Divide both sides by S. I get D over S on this side. And I end up with, what I end up with is S T over S on this side, which means the S is cancel out and you're left with just T. That's why we divided by the S, so it would cancel out. So, same as what we did before, pretty much. We're doing the opposite. S times T, so we're going to divide. Change the subject of the formula again. Very similar. So these three questions, you know, you don't need to to know anything extra really. That it's just asking the same thing in a different way. We're changing the formula to B. So we're doing exactly what we did here, except we're not going to have a number answer at the end. So A is equal to seven B. 2, and I'm rearranging for B. So it's bomb dash in reverse. I want to get rid of this bit first, and then the second bit. How do I get rid of plus 2? Well, I'll take away 2 from both sides. So that now becomes 0, take away 2. I'm now doing 7 times B. How do I get rid of the 7? I'll divide both sides by 7. And that would be simple. Now that the working line in my head there, my first line was take away 2, and the second line was divide by 7 simple as that. And the next one we've got a right angle triangle. So when you see a right angle triangle you should be thinking trig or Pythagoras. Now we don't know an angle in here so we should be thinking Pythagoras. So calculate the length of BC, this length in here. So I'll call that X. So with Pythagoras you need to decide is an add or a takeaway. Now I know, the hypo I, I know the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle so I know that. If I know the hypotenuse, am I going to do Pythagoras add, Pythagoras take away, and do Pythagoras take away? So I just say 13 squared, take away 5 squared, is equal to x squared. Simple as that. And I'll explain why you can't even really get it wrong in a little second. So let's do 13 squared, take away 5 squared on our calculators. So 13 squared is 169, take away 25, it's going to give me 144. So 144 is equal to x squared. To get x on its own, I need to do the square root of both sides. Again, just put a working line in here. I need to do the square root on both sides. The square root of 144 is 12. The square root just means what times what gives me 144. So 12 times 12 is 144. So that went in there as 12, and don't forget units as meters. Now, that makes sense to me. If 13 is the longest side, then that being 12 makes sense. If you get this first line wrong, if you do an add, you will end up with a number like 17 or 18. Can this line be bigger than 13? No, because that's the longest side, because it's opposite the right angle. So you almost can't go wrong. If you remember that that's always your longest side opposite the right angle, you could just try both ways and look for the one that makes the most sense. Okay? So the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. Uh, this bit is actually slightly more... Um, this is a sort of challenging scale. Come on, I'm going to zoom in a little bit for this. And the reason it's challenging is because of the diagonals. 
But let's not forget, first of all, let's label up the lengths we've got. Okay, so this is two length. That's four long, that's two long, this is two long. And then this bit here, the diagonals, we don't know how long they are, but we do know how far along and how far up they go. Okay, so both these diagonals, they go along and they go up. How far do they each go along and up? Well, they go two along and two up. Two along and two up. And I'll just write a little two in here for this bit as well. So I'll do some sums first of all. I've got lengths of two and I've got lengths of four. I need to multiply them by our enlargement factor. And again, it doesn't matter if it's an enlargement or reduction factor, you just multiply them by the number you've been told to. If the number is bigger than one, it'll enlarge it. If the number is less than one, it'll reduce it. So two times five over two simply means two times five divided by two. So that'll give me five. Four times five divided by two is four times five, which is 20 divided by two is 10. You can kind of think on that as two over one multiplied by five over two, and then you multiply the top and the bottom. So the two times the five and the one times the two. Okay, 10 divided by two is five. So you're kind of doing that. But yeah, this number times this number, then divide. This times this, then divide. So 2 is going to become 5, and 4 is going to become 10. OK, so let's start. We'll start with this point here. I'm going to put this point uh, over here. And I'm going to go down first. So instead of going down 4, I'm going to go down 10. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, a full thing. Full thing. So I'm now down at this point down here. And instead of going along 2, I'm going to go along 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'll do this at the top as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because at the top you're going along 2. We're now going to go along 5. And then I'm going to do this bit. Instead of going down 2, I'm going down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now it's the hard bit. Now it's this kind of this weird shape. So instead of going from this point to this point, I can't do that. I need to go from this point along and up. So I need to go along and up. How much am I going along and up? Five. I was going along two and up two, but now I'm going to go along five, so that takes me to here, and then I'm going to go up five, so that takes me to here, and then I can draw my line. And you can see it actually makes sense, doesn't it? It's starting to look the same. You can see that bit's in line with each other, that's in line with each other. Down the bottom, along two and up two, so from this point here, which is the same as that point there. I'm going to go along 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which takes me to here, and then I can draw a straight line along there. We don't need these lines anymore, they were just guiding lines, just kind of helping us draw a shape. So now, and this was really aimed for that, I was really aimed for that point, um, that point there. Okay, so that was along 5 and up 5. So now, the distance between these two points, we would hope, is going to be 5, because it was 2, and that's becoming 5. So let's just check. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And please use a ruler. I'm not using a ruler, because as I've explained, the function on this is actually a bit rubbish. But yeah, it looks quite complicated, but it's really not. All these horizontal and vertical lines are very, very straightforward. The diagonals, you need to break into horizontal and vertical. So number up your boxes, so 2, 4, 2, 2, 2, and then break it into horizontal and vertical, and then do your sum. What are these numbers becoming? Well, 2 is becoming 5, 4 is becoming 10, and then just pick a point and start to draw your shape with your new sizes, taking care when you come to the diagonals that you go along and up rather than doing the diagonal, because we don't know how long that is. Okay, good stuff. Um, I think I can keep going, actually, or maybe not. To, I think I'll pause there and I'll go into this on the next one.